Hi. Welcome back to the city of Ekria. We were finally going to progress some stuff. We'll try. Oh, oh, oh there's a cutscene. So you definitely be progressing. That's an interesting character. Are you gonna... No. Come on, man. The guard tower is over me. I can't tell if I've... He seems to be contemplating a decision of some sort and mutters something unintelligible under his breath. He seems to refocus as I speak, as if remembering that I am a living being. Yuki, I have something in mind for you. Let's make good use of you. Me? I ask him how. Well, you would lie there. By your very nature, an outsider. You belong to nothing and to no one. And therefore, you are capable of an uncommon objectivity. I wonder if I should share my myriad of popular, unpopular, or deeply subjective opinions, but decide to spare him. He seems to have much more to say. My name is Sandit. Oh, what a bad name. And I'm in the middle Why? of a very serious investigation. He's, he's dipped in sand. There oh, are he's very dipping it in the sand? Uh, no! There are few I can trust. You may have noticed that we find ourselves without power, yes? We do? It's no accident. Someone stole the power core from, our, from out of the atomic heart, and the perpetrator eludes me still. I thought perhaps you might be able to help me solve this crime and bring the thief to justice. I've already begun to picture myself darting in and out of the shadows, tracking the elusive power thief through the city. In my mind, I am swiftness and smoke, a creature of cunning and dexterity. And then Sandip hands me a rusted heap. This is an old power core. Scrap, really. But if you can bring this to the machinist for me, he can fix it and we can get this town going again. But, while you're there, I want you to ask if he has any idea who might want to who might want to steal something like this, and why. I'd ask myself, but uh, you get it. I see I've made the right choice. Report back when you've taken care of this. Yes, I'll be waiting. I say goodbye to Sandy. Okay. All these people talk. Mm, that's not the quest we're doing, though. Yeah, we were doing something else. This. You go to the chime maker. That's a fairly large place with lots of stuff around. Very easy to get lost in. And what, pray tell, are you doing right now? Exploring. The rooftops. Yeah. Because of... <sighs> when will you stop doubting me? I'm not doubting you, it's just... No. Fell out, huh? Well, I hope the stamina is enough for you to get over it. Oh, you did. There's a person inside. I know. There's also another chest. Well, not a chest, look. You get a basket. Can I? I cannot. Yes, you can talk to me.
you know there are other ways to explore right not just hanging in one place and I just want to looking see. Looking for, uh, looking to steal everything that's not nailed down. I just want to see what's in the city. What the heck is that? What did you even do? Were you trying to lay on top of this? I guess. It looked comfy. So, do you make a habit of trying to get yourself eaten? <gasps> tall lady. I Very asked tall what lady. it was that nearly killed me just now. Well, it's a worm, isn't it? This girl is nauseous and she's bloody strong. You shouldn't get that close unless you've had the proper training or else you've got food handy. But you're a glider, aren't you? So I suppose I can forgive a bit of clumsy worm handling. Oh, my name's Citra. I tell her I'm Sable and she offers a quick compliment to my name which almost soothes the embarrassment burning through my ears. After that, she's all business. Now, what's brought you here, glider? I get the sense if Citra were an animal herself, her fur might have bristled at my question. It triggers a memory where J.D. told me that it can sometimes be a labor in itself to explain how one needs help, and that I ought to try to see where I can be useful before I inquire. But I think I've made enough of an introduction already. Do I need help? Citra gives it a moment's thought. You know what? Yes. Nozzy loves a cacao and glowworm as a treat. If you could find her some, we'd both appreciate it. I tell her I think I can do that and decided better not to uh, ask for further details. I'm sure I can find something. Sure. I say goodbye to Citra. That's still not the quest we're doing. No. Like, you... You're like a lollipop that's been dropped. On the rug. And you pick up all sorts of stuff. I hear the guard murmuring about pomegranates to himself as I approach. When he notices me, he clams up and stands to attention. Can I help you? The guard seems to perk up at the mention of the word. Yes, have you tried one? They sell them in the Sarai outside of town. They are unbelievable, magical, each seed a burst of watery coolness. He continues to espouse his clear obsession with the fruit and I notice my own mouth salivating a little. Iria is a very important person. If I'm going to let a bothersome glider interrupt the day, then it better be worth my while. The guard seems delighted by my offer. Oh, Rohanna, this is beautiful. He snatches the pomegranate greedily from my hands and indicates that I can pass now. Move along, glider. You had a pomegranate? I don't know. <laughs> I wonder where, when was it that we picked that out up? And it's, I'm so confused. You just had a pomegranate? I guess. So weird. Okay. If he is surprised, happy, or displeased to see me, it's hard to tell. The guard by her side tenses up as I approach, but Iria signals to them and they relax. My presence is permitted. For now. So, you got past Yanis. Was it a pomegranate or just good old fashioned cuts? It doesn't really matter, I suppose. Well, you're here now. Yes? You have five minutes, and then I want you gone. There is a deeply irritated sigh at the beginning of your speech, and it comes like the hiss of a viper. Two reasons I can imagine. One, because they've something to gain from bringing the town to its knees. Now a sharp, annoyed inhale. Two, because power cores fetch a substantial price in illegal markets. 
I could ask more questions. I can feel her eyes narrow on me and imagine the drag of her tongue along her upper teeth. I will ignore the implications of that question, friend, but I was here in the market. Ask around if you'd like, any of the guards will vouch for me. There'll be some low life from the Serai, probably that climber fellow, Garay. They say he's, you know, one to speak to when a job needs doing, though he's not exactly what I'd call discreet. Fellow like that, he won't be the brains behind it, but if I were a scummy little nobody, he's the person I'd hire. I'm told you can find him under the bridge outside the town gate. I'll add Gary to my list of suspects. Are there more questions? Yes? Yuria seems completely disinterested in my question. I'm not even sure she heard me. I'll go to ask again. How do you think? What do merchants do? Don't answer that. You can buy them from me. Yes? Again? Oh, buy a merchant's bag. Very well. Come on. I can buy all three. You can buy all three? But I don't want them now. Anything else? No. Why don't you want them now? Well, because... I don't have a lot of money. I only have a hundred cuts. Hmm. Suit yourself, I guess. Let's uh, let's gather up some more hairs, you lollipop. That 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 chicken dislikes me. Stop fussing around with the chicken. to spare, anything would be appreciated, Glider. Same. What? <gasps> wow. Um. Well, well, that's it. You don't get anything. <laughs> this is a disaster. No power means no filter of water. Yeah, it came from here. I quite like it when the power is off. There is a sense of peacefulness to it. Hmm. I add them to my list of suspects. <laughs> The doctor looks concerned and frustrated. This power cut, all of our medical equipment, prosthetic alignment, artificial wounds, it's all going to run out of power very soon if the energy doesn't come back. Those useless guards and machinists. Okay, buddy. Get yourself some more cuts. And another chum egg. You sound mad. Don't be mad. You, know, you want to know what I'm mad? Do you have any idea what could possibly be the reason for me being mad? No. Would you like me to explain? Mm. Could that help you? I don't know. 
Maybe it would help you. Who's to say, Will? Man, you really need to yes end me more often. You want me to, to... I make the best glass this side of sea split. Well, normally I do at least. The power cut. It's not like casting little pots in the sand. I made a chime maker called Aeon. Ah, you have the husks that Eva promised me. Here's a little something for you, Trouble. Farewell, Glider. Yeah. You just completed this quest. Nice. So, nothing to sell me? No, nothing to show you. Oh. Or sell you. Or to offer. I, I would really love it if in real life you were the type of person who, after going to a store, delivering something, you would just hang around and start climbing over shit. Well, I'm not a good climber in real life. As we both know. What do you mean as we both know? Well... I have no idea. What the proficiency of your climbing experience is. person looks like they've been robbed. Hamza is the machinist in the area. He's busy tidying up the workshop. It looks like someone has ransacked the place. What can I do for you, Glider? Hamza explains that this happened a few nights ago. He seems more resigned and concerned about having his workshop ransacked. In any case, if he doesn't know who or why some, someone would do such a thing. I'm not sure if I am convinced by his ignorance, but I let it go. Anything else I can help you with? Hamza smirks, but his expression is warm. They've got you running errands, eh? Oh, I can relate to that. If I don't keep working, eventually I'm going to have to think about... Nobody needs that, at least of all me. I'll drop this thing off with sand dip when it's good and ready. Anything else I can help you with? He crosses his arms and looks down, thinking on... Power is the lifeblood of everything we do as machinists. I nod listening. If you want to take power from people, then you, know we, then you wish to make people powerless. Okay, you thought you said something there, didn't you? So I think you'll be looking for someone who cares little for the common person. I was in the workshop, sleeping. Get most of my sleep there lately, if I'm being honest. He shrugs. That being the case, though, I didn't notice anything was wrong. I ask why not, because I'm a machinist as well. And not one of us, no matter how different we may seem, would ever be caught dead without a backup generator. So I had a few hours good rest before I caught Wise. I nod, accepting his answer. If... if I had to say? He touches a hand to his chin. Iria, the merchant. I tell him I'm listening, he shuffles his feet, getting closer to me. His voice lowers to a low rumble. Iria and her ilk who run this town. The markets are their locus of control, and they've got their claws in the food stocks. Now, imagine, if you will, what happens when the power goes out. All of a sudden, folks are stockpiling food, and Iria and her lot are hiking up the prices, and there's not a damn thing any of the rest of us can do. You should look into Iria. You'll find her weaving the web of her web of corruption from above the beetle market across the bridge. You have to persuade her guard to let you pass, though. Well, again, we sequence broke here. Anything else I can help you with? Ooh! But can you customize your bike with... No, it's just with the, the parts you have already. Can I not change the die? Uh, you could. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. 
got lots of dice now. Yeah. That looks nice. I say goodbye to Hamza. You should check with Sandip to see if the spare power core is ready. Oh, well, where are you off to? Exploring. It's like you've never been to a foreign city. Absolutely nothing. Oh, that's the prison, is it? It seems like a prison cell. I bet this dude is just some, um, you know, this is a disaster and no power meet. Yeah, mm. okay. Oh no, what am I going to do? They've lost power in town. Gary is a climber in Equia. He smells awful and his mask is about to fall off. He scratches himself and spits on the ground before giving you a shrug. Gary smells. He's not the worst of or, or most pungent smell. Not rot or bile or anything so pointedly awful. No, Gary's smell is like old dust, tinged with stale oil and ground in, into the fabric of old garments or buried under the fingernails. It clings to him, and I turn away just a little as he answers me. Heard about a big sale going down the Sarave recently. Not sure what, but it caused a, a stir, let's say. Why does Whatever he sound it is, like a, a, it's long gone a, a by mob now. boss? He doesn't sound like a mob boss, he sounds like a moop. He shrugs and so I press him a little further asking if he had any idea who the seller was. And as far as I heard, it was some machinist with a mushroom habit. Not sure how true that is, but uh, well, let's say it's come up a few times. This machinist be Hamza? I'll add him to my list of suspects. I could ask more questions. Cafe. I cross my arms mostly out of impatience, but it seems to work on Gary somehow. Alright, I got in a little scrap, is that what you wanna hear? Nothing to do with anything, probably not your business, but sure, had a fight, power went out, broke it up. I keep my arms crossed. End of story, I got nothing else. He stares at me for a few seconds and I mistake it for consideration before I realize he's looking at me like I'm stupid. I don't name names, and even if I did, beats me who did this, but more power to him, I say. There's a pause and then he laughs loudly. You get it? More power to him? I tell him I get it. He chuckles and waves me off. I could ask more questions. Could you? No, that's it. Huh. You, Glider. My name is Mars. I have a problem and I wonder if you could help me. He has a voice like burnished steel. What? How? <laughs> Man, I choose the words for it. I'm sticking to mine. I gesture for him to continue. I can at least hear him out. It's my son. He sighs. He's being held by the Ekrin guard. He caught him tampering with the water supply. He puts up a hand to reassure him before I can speak any doubt. He was only trying to tap the supply, not taint it. He aimed to bring us a better source of water. One that would benefit us immensely. By Ekrin law, this is illegal, yes, but if we followed Ekrin law, we would all die of thirst waiting for some functionary to make the slightest effort. 
He sighs and crosses his arms, taking a step back. It is hard to tell if he's already defeated or just trying to tamp down some rising hope. It won't work to convince you if it sounds like too much I understand, but someone needs to stand against this, and for several reasons it cannot be me, not this time. Can you help? I'm not sure what I expect, but the solemn nod I receive catches me off guard. He steps closer to me and places a hand on my shoulder. There is something else, something you must know, and that I hope will not break the bond we've made. Have you ever heard tale of the Shade of Ecria? The Shade of Ecria, a hero of the people, and a bane to those who would subjugate them. Though to ask the guard or those who line their pockets, the Shade is a menace and a smuggler. I ask what he thinks. I think he was a man doing his best to right the wrongs of the powerful. But I might be biased. I am the Shade of Ecria. I was just about to Obviously. make a joke. But yeah. I don't know who he is, but he sure sounds like he was handsome once. And for today, so are you. What? When I retired, I hid the mask of the shade. But even though the shade was gone, the rumors, the legend, persisted. A glider could not convince the gods to free my son. But the shade? Oh, the mere sight of him. They are liable to give you whatever you want. Or jail me. Mas points at a mark in a nearby wall. You see this? Head to the town gate and look for this symbol. It will lead you to the mask. Collect the mask and return to me. Farewell, Glider. You get a cool mask out of this at least. Do I? Do I keep it? Oh, or do they just throw me in jail? I, mean, I don't know. Need some fast, reliable, both, neither. We got all sorts of bike parts just for you, Glider. Here's what I got. Ooh, expensive. Yeah. <gasps> Drip. Yeah. We uh, also need more money. You do need more money. You, you know what would probably uh, result in you getting money? Finishing some of the fucking side quests you've picked Do you up. think? Yeah. That sounds like such a novel idea. Well, Never crossed my mind. Not once. Yeah, the way you're playing, I was assuming that it might have at some point. Uh, well, the thing is, which one are you doing first? How this, about you check with Sandip? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a bit an inconvenient that every time you pick up a new quest, it overrides the one, the one you're following. Yeah. Sandip rocks from the balls of his feet to the heels and back, pleased. Good news. Hamza's finished his work in the spare power core. I could use your help with it if you have a moment. Perfect. I'd like to take the new core to the atomic heart and plug it in. And while you're there, see if you can't pick up any, on any clues about who might have stolen the original, yes? What sort of clues? Well, you know, something out of place. You like tapestry, yes? I nod. Have you ever looked at a big, beautiful, ornate tapestry? I've been so impressed with its craftsmanship. And then suddenly found your eyes drawn to a tiny little snag. Just one thing out of place. Clues are like that. Hamza left a keycard for you. You needed to unlock the front door. Central chamber is protected by a security code, but I'm sure you'll find your own way in. To get to the atomic heart, head over to the substation just outside town and follow the power cable that runs through another of the sands. See you soon. Hopefully with news. I say goodbye to Sandip. Okay. How about you? And with that, we also say bye to you. Do we? Yeah. Oh, and okay. we'll do this quest in the next episode. Oh, can't wait for it. Bye. Bye.